Good morning. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but through him. Jesus is far above us, and his plans come to fruition. You know, last night I made a couple of videos. I was lying on my mat at the time, and righteous indignation filled me. Anger. Just at the thought of the dismay and disarray and deliberately implemented nonsensical chaos in the infrastructures of our society. And one can only think, who's thinking logically, reasonably, that intelligent human beings can only behave in such a way when the devil's evil fills them. And the only way that they can be delivered from that or the society can be helped or, or saved from that, generally speaking, in general, is by the power of the Lord Jesus. Not by the strivings of a man, but by his prayer to the Lord Jesus. So, whilst it's good to expose these things and to even become angry at times, and that, rare, that rarely happens to me, that I would be filled with righteous indignation to that extent. But last night I vented it, you know. Um, the Bible commands us to be angry. It actually commands us to be. It says, be ye angry, yet sin not. And exposing corruption is not sinning. Not at all. There's no sin in it. So, first of all, it's important to mention that we must forgive everybody who's done anything against us. And I do. At the same time, we don't judge them with finality, but we must judge their actions to know that they're right or wrong. So we judge righteous judgment. And often when we judge righteous judgment, when people are behaving in a way that is lesser than their intellect, of course, this can fill a person with righteous indignation. You know, the Stephen Town versus the DPP um, court case, you can follow it um, on my channel, on my word, uh, YouTube channel, Word on the Street Ministries. Just look for Stephen Town versus the DPP or court corruption and look into those types of videos on my timeline or on the post feed. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> And you see those things have been described and exposed. Um, basically, the bottom line is, Ungarda Shiakala can't operate in civil jurisdiction. So therefore, anything that would come out of civil jurisdiction or any criminality that would result um, where guards have been involved in a civil jurisdiction, it must be naturally quashed, never revisited. So it's as simple as that. And the sections uh, 115, 117, 113, 114 of the Criminal Justice Act 2006 purport to afford guards this jurisdiction where they, where they don't have any. So, I mean, it's very basic. It should be cut and dry. It should be very cleanly done. But the fact that the High Court scheduled to do that and then abandoned doing it shows that they're running away from um, holding accountable those who have... Um, operated out of jurisdiction or legislated for guards operating out of jurisdiction. So, obviously, that's criminal behaviour of our courts to schedule something and then abandon it. So, in, there's a there's great deal of corruption now. Very serious corruption occurring in the High Court and Court of Appeal of, of, of Ireland. <clears throat> So they must submit to their, their role and they must fulfill their role according to the laws of this land. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. So the Bible says that God works in this world through faithful men. And I believe that the Lord can remove them. Absolutely I do. From, get, from corrupting any further. In Jesus' name. If it be his will, it shall come to pass. Amen. So, 
let us acknowledge that it is God who institutes all powers on the earth. And whilst we are to expose the unfruitful works of darkness, we're not to strive. It would be futile. If we're faithful and exposing darkness, we trust in the Lord to do the rest. We pray to him. We ask him to perfect our prayers. And we believe that what we have prayed for, we have received. And so we thank him. Amen. So blessings in Jesus' name. It is good for Christians to be angry. It shows that we care, actually. Because we're angry but not trying to hurt anybody. We're angry and we're still exposing and explaining the evils. Exposing them before the peoples. So, let the Lord move in the land. Let's pray for the leaders that they would do what is best and those in positions of office. Let them make the corrections they need to make and proceed forth under Jesus Christ the righteous, as the preamble of the Irish Constitution says. We the people of Era humbly acknowledging all our obligations to our divine Lord Jesus Christ, who sustained our fathers through centuries of trial. Blessings. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now tonight I think it's supposed to get down to minus three. I'm still sleeping on the streets. It was minus two last night, I think. And um, <clears throat> still no call from the minister's office. And I've emailed them. And many TDs, many, the list of them is on my Facebook page. The ones I've contacted, or most of them. So, as you can see, there's no outreach the only thing they've done is tell me you can go to Osnham House. It's pretty much a drug den. Smoking the marijuana in there, doing the Class A drugs that has been reported to the council. The council are doing nothing about it. They know that it's happening. I was on the phone to them the other day. I said the problem in the drug problem in Osnham House. I said it's rife. It's really bad. And the guy in the emergency housing unit in the council said, I know, because he rang me. <laughs> Left the message on my phone, but it, the, the message on my phone didn't fill everything in. You see? So they, they wanted me to ring back. They didn't want to just leave a message on the phone. And leave it at that. Or they didn't want to, anything to be recorded about what they were saying. with finality. So let's just give us a call back. But I called the number back before I heard the voicemail. Then I found out it was the emergency housing unit in the council. You see? But nothing's changed. All they're doing is trying to offer me Osnum House when Osnum House is a drug den. It's very bad up there. And they haven't even changed the radiators in the Lord knows how long. The rusting off the walls, yet they're getting 145,600 off the people they're supposed to be helping. That's a year. They can't afford to put a new couch in the place, or if it's needed, like, and paint the walls and put a new floor in the shower room that, where the floor is collapsing. A new shower or kit it out, or maybe make it a wet room with tiles so that the floor doesn't collapse again. Ridiculous, guys. 145,600 euros. And it's a little above a stable. It doesn't meet modern day standards for housing. I'm sure of that. 
And if you went into an apartment and the floor in the shower room was collapsing, the landlord would have to repair it. But when I called Paul, oh, the company or whatever the organisation over the hostels, the, the, what, what used to be the St. Vincent de Paul hospitals, are now the hostels, sorry, are now the de Paul hostels. So I called de Paul. I said, can I get into your hostel if I was to go directly, just as a matter of interest? And they said, no, you have to go through the council. So what's the point of de Paul then? and their expertise that they claim to have in the sector if they're only going to refer you and defer you to the council so the council can decide whether you can be referred to their facility or not. Why, why would the council be involved at all? Because you're paying to be there. The council don't give you any money. It's nothing to do with them actually because you're directly paying for the service and the money goes to DePaul. So why did the council have any involvement whatsoever? You're paying 80 euros for something that doesn't meet the required standards for a living. It doesn't make, meet basic standards. Yeah, they have a kettle there and all the mod cons, but when the shower room floor is collapsing, something's seriously wrong. If they're getting 2,800 euros a week, where they, because when I t spoke to DePaul, he said, the money we charge the people staying there is for the upkeep of the premises. Oh, is it? 145,600 a year for the upkeep of the premises? You'd buy another premises for that. You'd build one for that. You'd at least build on to the existing premises for that. Totally corrupt, sewn up, and they claim to be not for profit. Where, if they're not for profit, where does the hundred forty-five thousand six hundred go? Hi, yeah. Good morning. Let's go. Ridiculous. Does it go on wages? Blessings.